In this episode, we might finish up the painting real quick. Well, painting's done. The mudding, drywall is done, sanded, and we're ready for paint. Now, you might be able to tell behind me, I've actually kind of started the uh, primer, so the bedroom is done, the bathroom is done, and kind of just the ceiling is done pretty much here uh, in the, uh, the living room. Since I am using uh, an airless sprayer, everything has to be taped up. Luckily in the basement it's a lot easier than upstairs. There's just kind of one main big window and maybe this panel and a few plugs and stuff that needs to be taped. It was a lot less painful than upstairs. If you want to see a more comprehensive painting video, I would recommend you like click this little thing up here and that's our video when we painted upstairs. That is going to have a few more kind of tips and tricks on how to actually do the painting. In this episode, we might finish up the painting real quick. Uh, just filming and painting is going to be kind of a pain. So I might just set up a time lapse and you can see the whole thing being painted. And then after that, hopefully we can get to some flooring. That'll be the next step. If this is your first time joining us, you know that we actually just finished up the upstairs. Take a look at that whole playlist. Um, we built a custom house and what we're doing down here is that this is a basement apartment. So let's get some painting. backfire in the face <laughs> all right so this happened because I essentially I'm doing all of this by myself so I'm doing the spraying and as you can probably see by the time-lapse I am dropping the paint gun for a second and then I'm using the roller to back roll to get a nice texture on the walls if I end up back rolling a little bit too long sometimes in the very thin nozzle uh, the um, the paint will dry up a little bit and then I get kind of a backfire and I was just trying to clean it out and for some reason uh, it just shot out on the wrong side of the gun and well that's the result painting is always a messy job before then though I was doing it pretty pretty good now I actually have the entire uh, basement primed. It went really smoothly with the airless sprayer. And the one major difference from upstairs and down here is that in painting the old house trying to get that ready I realized how important quality paint is. And it's probably a recurring theme as I end up cheaping out on something and then turns out the more expensive um, product is better or the more expensive tool is better. Well paint is the same good paint applies really well. Our painter, kind of a friend of the family's, has a Sherman Williams account that he ended up sharing with us and so I was able to get really good prices on really good paint and it goes on really well. You can see here, this is the bedroom, the two windows, got the ceiling all painted, the hallway. So we got a few pot lights are going to be here in the hallway so it uh, it's really nice and bright with the uh, the bright white color so it's Sunday afternoon now now that I'm all done the primer I do still have the paint gun until uh, tomorrow morning I got to bring that back really early so I might actually try to apply the ceiling paint um, with the airless sprayer. I got seven gallons of that. It took me about nine gallons of primer for the basement. So hopefully I can use up, uh, I can spread that out to actually work and worst comes to worst, I'll go pick some more up, but at least I can get kind of started. Maybe this main room I can get done with, uh, with the sprayer and then the bedroom and stuff I can do with uh, just by roller, it's not so bad. So let's get to that. Let's try to get as much done as possible. Probably same with the primer. I might just time lapse this. It's really difficult and messy to film in between. So take a look at uh, this stuff going on. Well, I 
like I said, painting is a messy job, but I got it all done in one weekend. I just have the staircase, the upper staircase close to upstairs has to be finished up because we're doing a, a new door. So I'll show you guys that in a second. But uh, down here, it's all done and that's the finished coat. You can see behind me, it's all done except it's just kind of drying now, but most of this room is dry to the touch. I did the bedroom, the bathroom, and most of the staircase all the way up. Now all I have to do is clean this place up and clean the machine so I can return it to the rental place. You can see the bathroom and the curdy board that was not painted. Now that the paint is nice and dry, we gave it a few days to kind of air out down here with the, some fans going, windows open. I'm super happy with how that turned out. I think hiring a pro uh, drywaller and mudder was super worth it. I don't think you could find a seam here if you tried and the paint turned out really good so I'm super happy about that. The next step is the vinyl flooring and since we're going to be laying the vinyl flooring directly on to the concrete slab. I want to get this slab super nice and clean. You can see behind me there's a whole bunch of crap, all my paint supplies, some leftover plaster stuff, a few boards of drywall, so we're going to get that all cleaned up, move to another room, and then I'm going to just clean up the slab. We might have to scrape a few things as we go, but I'll try to get it as clean as we can before getting started. We cleaned the slab as best as we could, and now we're going to get started on the main room. As you can see here, we already got started just to make sure we had the, kind of the hang of this before we told you about it. So my buddy here uh, that you saw in that little time lapse is Adam. He's helped me out kind of a few times throughout the, uh, the process of building the house. I'm sure you've seen him in other videos. Like I said, <coughs> we're putting down vinyl flooring. This stuff has an underlayment already attached to it, so you can install this directly on the concrete slab. It is super easy to install. We're just using the uh, miter saw to cut the ends of this. They say that you can cut this with uh, just an X-Acto knife. Uh, I think it's a lot quicker with some power tools. And all you do is that you start at the in one corner of the room and then these kind of just click in place. Similar to laminate, although I think this stuff is even easier because you only need to kind of clip one edge. So you only clip the long edge and then these little short edges kind of are just tapped into place very lightly with a mallet or a hammer and um, yeah there's nothing to it. It's moving super quick. We already got four or five rows down and uh, we're just going to keep going. Because this is a long room we use the laser to actually square it up so that when we get to the end of the room we actually have a straight board. We're at the other end of the room here so this is the wall where the kitchen is going to be and this way is the uh, window. We started at the window and in order to get it square once we come, once we came here, I measured two little marks off the, uh, the wall here. So I measured six inches off the wall here, six inches off the wall there. You could in theory just measure right off the wall. We just wanted to make sure that we had a perfectly straight line. So we started with the laser line. If you don't have a laser, just measure straight off the wall so you have a square room. Adam's lining up the level there. He's making sure that it hits that line and that line, so now we got a straight line for this wall. He'll grab the tape and measure from here to the other end of the room. Then we're going to make a mark there and a second mark, and then we're going to run the laser again, and that's going to be the line which is square to this one, and that's where we'll start our first row. That's how we get started. We'll double check this measurement on this laser line a few times as we're going because this is a floating floor so it does move around a little bit but as long as we keep it adjusted it should stay straight by the time we get here so let's see if we actually have managed to accomplish that. at noon now so essentially we are flying this stuff is super easy to install uh, there's almost no waste and we got this pretty much this great room 
almost done. We just have a few feet at the end there. We're going to grab some quick lunch. We're going to keep going after lunch. Hopefully uh, we can get, <clears throat> we'll need to clean up a little bit because I kind of threw a lot of stuff just in the hallway and in the other room. So we're actually bringing this stuff into the bathroom, into the hallway. This is going to be the flooring for the entire apartment down here. The good thing about this is that you could use this in a bathroom, in a kitchen, it is fully waterproof. So I'm going to save a lot of money on getting a tile guy, buying some tile, which is a lot more expensive. We're just going to keep rolling through to the end of the apartment. The other good thing about the bathroom is that there's no grout to clean. This is super easy to clean. It, bare, it doesn't scratch. So I think this is going to be a good choice for a basement apartment. And in the worst case where the apartment did get flooded down here for some reason, the sump pump malfunction or some act of God, you could pull, you could number this entire thing just to make sure you know where to put them. And then you could take it all up and start putting it right back down after you've cleaned up the water mess. This stuff won't change shapes, it won't bulge, it won't warp. Uh, it could be soaked in water. It would just need to be cleaned, dried, and reinstalled. So we're gonna grab some lunch and we're gonna keep going after this. There you saw, I have the bathroom all done. I'm about 50% uh, done in the hallway. And then the hallway is gonna work in directly into the bedroom. I'm doing one continuous flooring uh, from the main living space here into the bathroom and into the bedroom. So that means that now that I'm in this kind of corridor bathroom area, there's a lot of uh, much smaller intricate cuts. So that's why it's a little bit slower than um, kind of this big room was. I got this room done really quickly, uh, just in a few hours. Now I've moved on to uh, this entrance area, so I still have that little closet to do. I'm gonna do that tomorrow morning. The, I just finished the bathroom, and again, these had some tricky little cuts for kind of the drain, as you can see here. I think these turned out really nice. And then for the toilet flange, those were all done using the jigsaw. They're a little bit tricky. And then sometimes when I get to a wall and I have a little sliver, I've been going to the garage and using the table saw to make really thin cuts that are straight along the length of the board. And you can see behind me, the bedroom is a huge mess. It's the last room I have to do. So tomorrow morning, bright and early, I will take everything out of the bedroom here. I'll put it in the great room. There's some stuff here that I'm bringing to the cottage and uh, then I'll have to clean the floor here and that'll be the last room I have to do. I'll finish up that little closet and hopefully um, that'll be it for the flooring. Well, that said, I will catch you guys in the morning. It's the next morning. Now I have to get all this room cleaned up. Unfortunately, this is where all the heavy stuff is. So this might take a little while. Well, that seems to be a lot easier when you watch the time lapse, but that door must have been kind of 300 pounds. I picked that up at my office when we were doing a renovation thinking I would use it down here, but uh, I only used one of the two, so I used the side light, and now I don't know what to do with that solid heavy door. That said, this room is good to go, so I'm gonna start in the kind of door area back here. That's all the tricky spots, and I think once we get to the bulk of this room, it's gonna go real fast. So I think I can get this done in a few hours. All right, so I got the entryway to the room done and I got my first row. That means we're into the bulk of the room. So let's take a look at how we actually install this stuff. I think a big open room like this is a really uh, kind of easy place to start. With this system, you're gonna wanna start on the left side of the room just because the way that the little grooves overlap, well, I'll have an open groove that I put my next piece on top of. I'll show you guys that in one second. 
So here, since I have a little piece against the wall for my first row coming from the, the hallway, I'm gonna start with a full piece. Now, I'll show you guys how easy this is. So that's it, it just clicks into place. And again, I got kind of a long way to go, so I'm gonna go with another full piece. And with this vinyl flooring system, it's not like your typical laminate where you have to put it underneath and then underneath the other one. All you have to do is line up the long side and you butt that against the short side here and then all you do is take a hammer or rubber mallet and you tap that into place and that clicks here and this seam will be covered up by the next piece that's going to um, tighten that and lock that in place. Here's a little trick for when you get to a wall. This might be super obvious to some of you who've done this before but it's a real time saver for actually cutting these pieces without having to measure everything. Now, if you put your board, clearly your end that needs to click is on this side, so you can't actually bring that far enough to score it. So, what you do is that you line up your piece how it will be oriented, and then you flip it 180 degrees on itself, like this. You put that up against the wall, you leave a little space just so that there's a little room for movement, and then you score it to align with this line here. Now, when you flip this back over, once it's cut, that's gonna fit in this groove here. So there's really no need for a tape measurer, almost ever. I've used it once or twice in a tricky little corner, but uh, about that, I use scoring most often, and I think that's way more accurate. So let's go cut this piece real quick. I'm using my compound miter saw to make all these cuts. The manufacturer does say that you can cut this with a knife and when I have kind of a long edge to cut or around door frames and stuff, I do score it with a knife and then snap it, but I find that generally if I'm just cutting straight lines, the miter saw is the best way to go. I'll line it with the back fence here, line up my mark. So it's as easy as that. I have my piece that fits into my row and then the leftover piece is the starter piece for the next row. So you're always, always using all your offcuts. so there's very minimal waste. And again, this is the piece that we just cut. This just slides into place. Make sure that there's absolutely zero seam here. And then take that hammer. that into place and everything becomes really seamless. Now let's take this next piece and start out our next row. Same thing for this, you start on your left wall and you just keep going. Once you hear that kind of little click, you know that everything's in good place. table saw. I don't quite have a full row down there. So at the end of the day from the very front of the house to the very back of the house doing this as a single piece of flooring all the way through I'm only about kind of a quarter inch off in this very last piece so I think that's actually pretty good for such a like over a 50 foot length. So after this I'm just going to have to finish that little piece in the hallway here and then I'll have the two closets, so the one in this room and then the entry closet. So uh, all this is said and done, I think I'll have about you know four or five boxes of extra uh, wood that uh, maybe we'll find another thing to do with. So I'm going to go to the garage, cut that down on the table saw and then we can finish this thing off. I am absolutely 
all done. I ended up actually doing the mechanical room as well. I finished those little closets. I had about, you know, six boxes left, so that's why I decided to do the mechanical room. It's a bit cleaner in there. And then uh, I had some extra drywall kind of laying around that uh, I had nothing to do with, so I ended up installing that in the mechanical room. I will show you guys that in one second. That's going to help to hold the um, rock sole insulation in the wall that's, that I put in there for soundproofing between the mechanical room and the bedroom. Uh, I just had to put it up real quick because uh, I didn't want to throw it out so I better uh, use it. Speaking of waste, there is one thing that I did want to show you is my entire waste pile for this, in, for this entire project. So, as you can see, there is very little waste for this stuff. That's probably why I had a few extra boxes. I tend to order 10, 15% more uh, on top just to make sure that I have enough to uh, get everything done. Clearly had a little too much. I have a few boxes left. I'm sure I can figure out something to do with those. I suppose vinyl is kind of a plastic product, but the amount of uh, waste and stuff going to the landfill is very minimal, as you can see. So. That's helpful for, I mean, environmental reasons, but it's super helpful because I don't have to get my trailer loaded up full of crap and then bring that to the dump and then I'm charged, you know, by the pound. So this really small waste pile can uh, just be thrown in the waste bin and that's that. Okay, so let's do, let's do a quick tour. Uh, my apologies, the place is still pretty messy. I haven't done my final cleanup. The washroom here is all done. We got the toilet there ready to install. We're probably gonna do some uh, kind of finished electrical pretty soon since the place is painted. Here's one place you guys hadn't seen and that's the mechanical room. So I just quickly threw up these kind of four boards that I had left. One's actually a 5.8 at the bottom and then one's a half inch at the top. These two are two full half inch boards that I had so I put those up and you can see we have a little bit of storage here and the bedroom. All done. The bedroom closet, I'm sure that's gonna get filled up with stuff real quick. I don't know why I keep doing this with my hand. The bedroom is going to get the filled up really quick. That's going to be the end of this video. I feel like we got a lot done in this video over a really short period of time. I guess the painting is all done now and the flooring is all done. So next video is going to be probably some electrical stuff. Matt's going to come and finish up the panel, uh, do all the plugs, and then we'll get to baseboards and doors. So that'll be uh, reliant on whatever, <clears throat> whenever that ends up being delivered. If you like what we're doing here, hit the subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. The channel's grown a lot recently. And if you want to get notified every time we make a new video, please hit that little bell button. And uh, I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one.